If you were early in the morning and watch the sunrise on the lake, even if none's in your bucket, the beer scenery will fill the space. When the barber goes down with tugging, this thrill compares to nothing. Yeah, this their life for loving, cause you're dealing with some fishermen. How we doing, ladies and gentlemen? I thought the slides in. You just tuned into another episode of Slide Life Fishing. Get ready to do a little fish painting today, ladies and gentlemen, as you guys can see. I went and caught a few sheephead and some sand brim the other day, and um, I got my auntie on the way over here right now, getting ready to get my wife, Mama Slabs, who's filming right now. Hey, ready. family. She's getting ready to help her out on the computer a riddle of a couple things, and um, my auntie's favorite fish is sheephead. Auntie T, can talk about you, baby girl. Her favorite fish is sheephead. And uh, when she was on the phone, let me know she was on her way over here. She said she'd be here in about an hour and, uh, for me to uh, cook something up for her mouth when she get here. She loved coming over here to eat. And I told her, uh, she was like, uh, won't you get in there and fry me some fish? I said, I ain't got no fish clean. And I forgot. I was like, oh, I do got some sheephead in the refrigerator. I was getting ready to clean. And had, ironically, her favorite fish, I told her I was going to clean up a few and go ahead and fry some. So... I'm gonna bring you guys along with me with the cleaning process and the frying process, okay? Which will probably be another video. So let's go ahead and get started. Right here, what we have, we're gonna start with our sheep head, ladies and gentlemen. I got three nice ones. I got one real big one, and I got two that's perfect eating size. This is the eating size that we like here in Florida, ladies and gentlemen. But these big ones right here, yes, sir, that's a whole different ball game. So actually, I'm gonna start with the smaller ones. And I'm gonna show you guys how I like to clean these size ones right here. You guys all know I like to spin, uh, scale my fish with the old spoon. Scale them up, get the excess scales coming off from this right there. Now sheephead, ladies and gentlemen, here in Florida, when they like to bite is when it's cold winter time ladies and gentlemen december january february all the way up into march some cases because they spawn in april but they like to school up and be ready in the winter months along with the mullet now sheephead you can catch numerous different ways ladies and gentlemen i've caught them on slip bobbers i've caught them on bottom rig but the bait of choice would be a few different kind of baits now these fish prey on crustaceans is what they eat on a normal basis is a, a crustacean type situation and as you guys look at these teeth right here that's why they got them like that now what they do with these teeth ladies and gentlemen is they uh go around barnacles and dock pillars and things like that and you guys know in salt water or brackish water where i caught these guys that you get oysters and things like that that grow along the pylons and the pillars and they like to get there and they eat them oysters right off and they use those teeth right there to pick right in them shells and get them oysters ladies and gentlemen they good at it too so you can use oysters for bait that's a very good bait but it's more for vertical fishing when you can just drop it straight down i wouldn't advise you guys trying to cast the oyster out there because number one they get it off the hook very easily you will be able to feel the bite fishing vertical like right on top of them you understand what i'm saying Another good bait, ladies and gentlemen, who I caught a lot of sheephead on would be fiddler crabs or little small mutt crabs, ladies and gentlemen. Any kind of little small crab, they love it. You can go out there and that's their choice of bait. There's oysters and crabs. They love crustaceans. That's their favorite food. Now, when they schooling, like now in the wintertime, if you can find them where they sit in the mess of them, you can even catch them with shrimp, ladies and gentlemen, how I caught these guys. Now, that's more of a rare phenomenon, but it can't be done. Now, what I typically like to do when I'm fishing with shrimp, for, for sheephead, is I will peel the shrimp out the shell and make the shrimp sort of like a glob, like how an oyster would be. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm getting ready to gut these fish, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to do these smaller ones first, you guys all remember. Same thing with the freshwater fish. 
I go right up that universal hole, ladies and gentlemen, which will be located on the bottom of every fish right there. I call it the universal hole, ladies and gentlemen, because that's where they pee, poop, lay eggs at. It's universal, okay? Take that knife up there and we're gonna slide right towards that head. Same with him. And I'm gonna take that head right on up. Now, sheephead have sloppy guts like a sloppier would be in fresh water, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I don't like cleaning them too much, but hey, it is what it is. I'm definitely going to be using a spoon for the sheephead because as you guys can see, they got a lot of filth on the inside of their stomach. I'm going to tell you why. Because they eat oysters and all that type of stuff, ladies and gentlemen. And um, that's why the guts are sloppy. Like that. Same thing with the tilapia. And that's all like cleaning them also. But you do what you got to do, ladies and gentlemen. Nah, he got a lot more work I got to do. I'm going to gut him a lot more. Trying to see how I just get that spoon and slide them guts right out of there just like that. Flip him over, get the other side. Same way. Now I'm going to slide, excuse me. I'm going to rinse these guts on. When there ain't that many guts, ladies and gentlemen, I fertilize my grass with it. You understand what I'm saying? Now, if I had a lot of fish, I wouldn't do that because of the pile up of smell. But this little old bit right here, ladies and gentlemen, you won't even smell it. We're gonna take this water hose, we're gonna rinse that meat out. Now that's ready to go in the house in detail. Get all the rest of your nitpicks out of there and things like that. Let's jump on Big Boy. Now, with Big Boy, all I'm gonna do is simply fillet him. That's why if I would have thought about it in the beginning, I would have scaled him. We're gonna fillet and take him out his skin. You guys see, I just started a simple incision right along his spine, ladies and gentlemen, right on the back of them pins, right? I mean, his top fins right now. You're gonna take that knife, ladies and gentlemen, just make you a little a line. We do no cutting right here. Straight sliding of the knife. So you're gonna need your sharp knife anytime you try to fillet. You understand what I'm saying? Get that knife, just slide. As you guys can see, I'm just sliding that knife right down that meat, just like that. No cutting, just slide. And you guys can see that meat coming right off that spine all the way down now when I go in like that ladies and gentlemen I like to find the even part of them just go ahead and go all the way through and just finish my fillet I already made my blueprint so now it's just time to finish as you guys can see I virtually got all that meat off that, nothing but bones right there, ladies and gentlemen. Now it's time to finish him on and off. A lot of people like to go up a little higher right here because this is where your stomach cavity at, which is fine. Find out where it's at. I get my knife back up under there, ladies and gentlemen, just like this now. Finish coming up. Just like that. Now you guys can see he ready to come off. Okay. Now you get your cutting knife, 
Start right here, chip. You want all your meat. You don't want to leave some of it. You want all of it. Cut that fillet off there. Just like that. And as you guys can see, beautiful sheep ass fillet. Right up. Skin still on. Beautiful fillet. Let's do the other side. God damn, I told you guys. That knife, start right at the tip, make your incision going all the way down to the tail, put your thumb in there, take that knife, follow your line. Now, Sheephead has a nickname, ladies and gentlemen, they like to call it Poor Man Lobster. Understand what I'm saying? People like to um, say that the flesh of a sheephead tastes just like the flesh of a lobster. Now, I have never cleaned the sheep head, I mean, cooked the prepared the sheep head in the way that they say he tastes like that lobster. They say if you cook him down in garlic butter, he tastes exactly like lobster, okay? So, you guys put in the comment section and let me know if that's true. If sheep head tastes like lobster. But I have heard it. Again, ladies and gentlemen, filet is ready. Now I'm going to show you guys the difference from a good filet and a bad filet. Everybody messes up. Now you guys notice on this side, you virtually see no meat on that bone. And you guys can see where I slipped that right there. I slipped the came a little too high. And look at all that meat I left behind on that bone on accident. So, ladies and gentlemen, now you guys got to see the difference of a good job, which is this side, a good job, and a bad job. But, hey, it is what it is. I virtually got most of it. So I ain't going to complain about it. Now what I'm going to do, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to rinse these fillets off. And we finna take them out the skin. And this is how I do mine. You guys see that little piece of skin right there that's hanging? I like to put my finger on it like this, like that there. Take my knife, drive right on top of it, and just go right on top of that meat. I mean, right on top of that skin and just slide that knife right down, ladies and gentlemen. Keep uh, getting yourself more leverage. As, you, as you're taking it out the skin, you're gonna have more and more area for you to be able to reach and grab. Just take it right out that skin. Just like that, ladies and gentlemen, as you guys can see. That's the sheep hair skin right there. Full body suit right there. Here goes the meat. Full beautiful sheep hair meat, uh, for that. Now this is how I carve mine. I go right on top of that stomach cavity, ladies and gentlemen. And I cut it right out. Some people eat it, some people don't. I like to cut mine out. Now that's a beautiful sheep head fillet, ladies and gentlemen. He just need a cornmeal bath, ladies and gentlemen, and into some fresh oil, and it be fried. You understand what I'm saying? So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dump this one. Another thing, ladies and gentlemen, speaking on those guts I put in the ground, you see Mama Slab's rose bush back there. I planted that for it. She got pink roses on it. And I like to put the fish heads around it sometimes and it makes it bloom real nice. That's another way I like to use my fish. But again, ladies and gentlemen, grab that skin. You don't need your sharp knife now when you're skinning. Slide that knife right on top of that skin. All you doing is guiding that knife. That's all you doing. You, you the guider and the provider. 
And there you go. Another full sheep hair skin suit. Another beautiful fillet. Let me get me some rinse and water right here in the pan. Beautiful sheet there, so like you can grill that, fry that, whatever you want to do with it. Like I told you guys, I take that stomach cavity right off. It's gonna be totally boneless. Uh oh, I missed one bone, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. Nah, that's a hundred percent boneless, skinless sheep head fillet. Right there, ladies and gentlemen. That's ready to be cooked. However you like, however your heart desires, ladies and gentlemen. And I got a bowl right here, y'all. Use that to rinse off the meat. I'm gonna use this to store my clean meat in. Check out that fillet. They're gorgeous. Ain't that gorgeous? Look at the meat, ladies and gentlemen. Nice, beautiful meat. Hey, right, that's the fillet. Okay. Those guys pretty much done. So I get to the sink. Now, nah. all right, ladies and gentlemen, now we're moving on on to our next fish. And right here we have, first of all, you guys let me know what they, what you guys call these in your local waters, if you guys have these in your local waters. Uh, now here in Florida, the type of fish that we're getting ready to clean right here is mostly um, caught in um, brackish water situations. These guys right here, they like to get in those channels where the salt water and the fresh water mix. That's what brackish water means, ladies and gentlemen. And um, that's typically why I catch these guys at, but they are a salt water fish. You can catch them in the ocean also. But like I said, I mostly catch them in brackish water. What we call these are sand brim, ladies and gentlemen. Now, these fish are used numerous different ways other than just scaling, cleaning, and cooking, ladies and gentlemen. These fish are used when they're smaller for bait. They are called snook candy. Y'all put in the comment section if you guys ever used them for bait before. But yeah, these guys are bait fish also. But here in the black community, ladies and gentlemen, we like to eat them. And um, a lot of my people, aunties, uncles, grandmas say they remind them of a, a freshwater bluegill. They taste more like a freshwater fish, so we like to eat them. Uh, the sand brown, but um, I'm gonna show you guys how I like to clean them. Okay, you ready? Let's do this. Of course, we get the spoon now. I'm gonna clean the sand browns, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna keep it all the way honest with you guys. Be careful. These guys, actually, if you look up, look them up, they are prehistoric fish, very old fish, one of the oldest fish that lives in the ocean. That's why they are compatible with fresh water and salt water. You understand what I'm saying. But this dagger right here, ladies and gentlemen, that prehistoric dagger right there will hurt you bad. You understand what I'm saying? That prehistoric dagger right there will hurt you bad. It's like, it'll go through you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna be honest with you, and it has a little bit of venom in it that will have you hurt. No, they are not poisonous, but it puts a little bit of venom in you, just like the catfish, that'll draw some pain to your world. You don't want that, so y'all be careful. Another thing, right here where my fingers at holding down, ladies and gentlemen, those gill plates are sharp as razors. So when you catch them, be careful. I have been sliced a few times dealing with sand brooms. That plate right in there is sharp, okay? Now these are some pretty big ones here. Now, these guys can be caught different ways too. Now like I was telling you guys about the vertical fishing with the oysters over a pylon or something like that right there. Catch them just like that too, right along with the sheephead. I'm going to tell you what fish you're usually going to catch when you're fishing for sheephead. You're going to catch sand brim. You're going to catch angelfish. You're going to catch um, 
black drum, red drum, because they all like those crustaceans, those oysters and those crabs and stuff like that. They all eat them, and I've caught every species I just named while fishing for sheephead. No, I do not know how to target angelfish, but when I go targeting sheephead, that's when I can catch me some real nice angelfish, and Mama Slab loves angelfish. I don't really like them too much myself, but Mama Slab loves them. She said they're delicious to her. Now we're gonna scale them, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all know what time it is. The old rinse the room. Make sure all those scales gone. Right up the universal hole, like I told you guys, every fish has one, ladies and gentlemen. Right there. Right towards the head. When you get right here up under that upper under chin right there, ladies and gentlemen, dig a little harder with your knife because it is a little more solid. As you guys can see. Man, it feels good out here in Central Florida today, ladies and gentlemen. They call for scattered showers. No showers, but man, it's overcast out here, man. Look at the sky, ladies and gentlemen. It's fall. We got the leaves falling out the oak tree. Man, it's beautiful out here, man. The only thing, though, that oak tree gonna have me raking here soon. Good Lord, I'm mercy, boy. The raking will begin. Now, we're gonna take these heads right on now. We don't want no heads. Until I show you guys about that fish head soup. Which is delicious. My Facebook not seen it. Right up under that chin. Uh, I told you guys I gotta dig a little harder. He is strong up under that chin, boy. I'm actually gonna stop from that forehead. He got a short, he got a she got a hard forehead too, y'all. There we go. Good grip on him. I had to let him go and re grip him, ladies and gentlemen. I don't like these accidents with knives. I'll always be careful with that knife. That man just poked me good, y'all. Y'all see me jump, that's why. He just touched me in the spirit. I see the bigger ones got even a stronger head. Hmm, it's gone now. Look at them little lips. They extend all the way out too, ladies. Have you seen that? This particular species, they lips. Ooh. What I told y'all, I bet instant blood. See, plan, y'all understand now? They gill plates are sharp as razors, ladies and gentlemen. Oh yeah, he got me good. On both sides too. Woo, he got me good, y'all. Just a tap. See how deep that is? He got me. I'm gonna stop this bleeding. Let's see if it's stuck. No, it's time to come back. So be careful. I got to show you guys one on one. Why to be careful? We don't cry about nothing now. Ooh, hurt too. Use that blood up out of there. Get that blood gone. Come on now, I gotta clean my fish. Let that ride there for a second. And it's coming too, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you guys, give me a second, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be right back with you guys. Let me go ahead and get this bleed to stop, man. Style light, baby. Be careful with them sand browns. All right, ladies and gentlemen, excuse that right there. Well, I'm glad I am glad I got to show you guys. I hate it was my finger, but I'm glad I got to show you guys. Mama done went and put some of that good uh, cream on there. I got to stop the bleeding, ladies and gentlemen. I ain't want to put a bandage on right now. The water just gone. 
defeat that purpose, so I'm just gonna go and keep on going. Just like any man do, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all know we get bruised and scratched every day. You gotta keep going, you gotta keep going. So ladies and gentlemen, we done got our uh, fish cut open. And now what we finna do is gonna get the spoon, gut it. Y'all see that stomach sack right there, ladies and gentlemen? I take all that out of there. Stomach lining, all that got to go. I don't want none of that. I detail it in the sink. All that dirty little strain and stuff. Go bye bye. Nah, they got a little blood line, so scrape that blood line a little bit. Do him the same. I squirt him out. We can do it. He got the same black lining like mullet and sheephead. See, get that out of Grab that stomach lining. Rip that right out. It comes out pretty easy. If you get a good grip on it, it pretty much comes out. At that time, I tore it. So now I got to get in there and cut it out. So, definitely just doing me to slide that knife right down, get you a good grip of it, and pull. Can't grip it like I can't. Get that knife, ladies and gentlemen, and work him out. Excuse me, moment. Shake up that bloodline a little bit. That water hole. that bloodline out and like I keep telling you guys that water gonna expose anything in the all the little strings and stuff that's moving around get in there and pick that up and I do that in the sink ladies and gentlemen that's why I do my detail work at I just want to scale and gut out here clean out that inside real nice as you guys can see that's beautiful the rest of that stuff so yeah, you guys can pick it out in the sink. Now, you sand brim, ladies and gentlemen, I like the butterfly down. But this bigger one, I'm gonna do him another way. I'm gonna do him like how I did that mullet for frying pieces. So I'm gonna take him, go down that spine. Lay that one side. Look how beautiful and white that meat is. Flip him. Same thing on this side. More of a disadvantage right here, so I'm gonna take the knife and go this way. Now watch that fin I was telling y'all about now. Slide that meat right off. Same way with the sheep head, ladies and gentlemen. Just slide it. The knife do the work for you. Find your good section piece where you know you at. Take that knife, go all the way through. Okay, I couldn't right there, so I'm gonna keep going down because I don't want to mess up my meat. Find out where I'm at. Take my knife. I'll ride up the opposite way. I'll do whatever it takes before I mess that meat up. Get to lay off that meat, off that spine. Uh-oh, see that? Be careful now. There you go. Now, as you guys can see, his meat is beautiful and white. Ain't nothing left on that spine, ladies and gentlemen. He can go to the trash. Look at that. Same thing with them stomach cavities, ladies and gentlemen. I take it on off. I want nothing but straight meat. I like the skin on the sand brim, so I left the skin on. I ain't gonna skin him. I gotta do that sheep head. Look how beautiful and white that meat is, ladies and gentlemen. Take the other side, take them bones out. Beautiful sand brim fillet right there, ladies and gentlemen. Get him in the 
wrench pan. That thing was stinging too, y'all. Boy, he got that thing was stinging. Mama Slides, I'm so sorry. She gonna get me in a minute, y'all. Y'all bet that. She gonna whoop daddy in a minute. I just hit her good too. Oh, boosh. Rinse that meat off. Look at that beautiful white meat on that sand brown. You fry that, boy. You talking about some good eating. Get him right on in there. Look at that. White meat. And look how thick it is. Yo, oh, yeah. Nah. With our other sand brown, ladies and gentlemen. We'll go right on top of that spine, like this here. All the way down the side of huh? Make sure you break through them level of bones right there. Hear them cracking, ladies and gentlemen. Like cracking, I'm gonna get my big knife in and break through them bones, because I don't want no accidents that night. That's sharp. And we're gonna take this, ladies and gentlemen, slide right down that meat. Y'all know what I'm going with this. He finna get ready to fly away. Now as I slide that meat, I like to work my fingers down and be pressing that fillet over where it lay down beautifully. Like, like that. You guys can see. Look at that. He can fly away. That's a butterfly. Hey, Y'all see Bubba Slide got the way down. I'm gonna take these guts. I'm gonna take them right here to my rose bush. Right now, I'm gonna buy a rose bush and that's fertilization. Excuse me, Mum Slab. Nah, you gonna just rinse this butterfly off, ladies and gentlemen. That water done tattle told, and you guys can see all the stuff that I'm gonna be picking off in the sink, ladies and gentlemen. When you're going up for your, dick, for your uh, detail. You want to get all this stuff out of here, man. All these little pieces of white film and stuff like that. I'm just showing you guys an example. I kind of like to take my time at the sink, ladies and gentlemen, and do that. See all that little stuff like that there? You want that out off your meat. You get what I'm saying? We are going to clean our bloodline out. It's going to be on this side, too, as you guys can see. It probably ain't nothing that's going to harm you or nothing, man, but I just don't want that on my meat. You understand what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen? Nah. If I wanted to, other than butterflying this fish, ladies and gentlemen, I could just take him off right there and then have this whole side right here just like that. But we ain't gonna do that. We're gonna keep it, but I'm finna score it though. One. Two. Three. So now when I fry it and I flip it on this side, ladies and gentlemen, easy access right to that meat. And look how beautiful that meat is. Y'all see them rings in there? Ain't that gorgeous? Sand brim is a very underrated fish, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we got a little small black drum right here. He undersized, I admit, but he swallowed the hook. And I ain't want to throw him out there knowing that he's going to die. We're not going to eat him. So he here, ladies and gentlemen. So y'all don't judge me. Skills on. And no, that is not an excuse that will get you out of the trouble. But that's just the excuse I'm telling you guys, which is the truth, on why he's here. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, always follow your regulations, ladies and gentlemen, if you can. I understand things happen, but it's best to follow your recognition. I'm not gonna tell, never tell y'all to violate nothing. But this is just what I did. You understand what I'm saying? Excuse me, mama. So if I would've got caught with this fish, ladies and gentlemen, I would've took full responsibility for my actions. Simple as that. Universal hold. Even though, Y'all put in the comment section because I'm pretty sure y'all know about this already. Even though these are the best size to eat in the black drunk family. <laughs> you don't really want them big ones. The big ones known to have worms. The smaller ones are good eating, ladies and gentlemen. Get them 
guts out of them. Screw up another bloodline. Give them a real good rinse, ladies and gentlemen. A little film and stuff. Like I told you guys, where you can detail that at. Our guts right here. It's a mama rose. Guts. Guts. And we're gonna butterfly him just like we did that last sand bro. Right on top of them bones, crack through them bones, right down the side, all the way to the tail, open him up, slide, slide, slide. Sharp knife, ladies and gentlemen, keep him on deck. I don't care where they come from, just keep them sharp, baby, just keep them sharp. Nothing like that done. Got water. Score them. Season this can get all down in there beautifully. Look at that meat. Look at that meat. That's a beautiful piece of flyaway right there. Now, you guys just seen three different ways to clean your saltwater fish. Butterfly Filet Traditional. Okay? And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, ladies and gentlemen. I slide like fishing. I'm gonna go ahead and get this fish in the house and go detail it. Got my auntie on the way. We're gonna get ready to go ahead and start frying some fish. Now, if you guys don't remember anything, I want you to remember this. If you have to ask, you are not living. And if you're not living, you're not fishing. Slide like baby, it's a lifestyle that I present and bring a lifetime of memories. And you can take that to the bank, ladies and gentlemen, or the dock, as long as you got a pole in hand. God bless y'all. I love y'all. Until the next time, the professor is checking out. Slide like baby. Slide like baby. If you are early in the morning and watch the sunrise on the lake, even if none's in your bucket, the beer scenery will be in space. When the barber goes down with tugging, this thrill could pass nothing. Yeah, this that life for loving, cause you're dealing with some fishermen.